Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Worship Wednesday. This is an opportunity for us to gather together and to to really center our hearts around worship and, and really uh, an opportunity for us to, to take the middle of this week and really bump up that worship and carry us into the weekend. And so the hope is that uh, throughout the week, we will be in a mode of worship of the Lord. Let's come before the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you once again for just this opportunity to to worship you. And Lord, I pray that these songs that we lift up to you will be more than just words. It'll truly be a reflection of our heart and our desire to want to connect with you. And more than that, Lord, uh, an opportunity for us to go uh, beyond just words, Lord, uh, for us to really uh, connect you and to uh, to receive from you uh, a response to this worship. Uh, Lord, uh, we pray that you will be most glorified by all this. We love you, Lord. We give you thanks. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at verses 28 and 29. 28 and 29. Now, the verse, uh, verse 28 starts off with the word therefore. And 
And we're going to start there. Uh, the word therefore, as I always say, is there for a reason. The, what comes next is there for a reason. And it's a response to what was happening just prior to that, what was mentioned just prior to that. And if we look at, uh, at what was before this, we, see, we actually see a number of things. I would actually go as far as starting from Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the Hall of Fame of Faith. We see a lot of examples of faith from various characters of the Old Testament, from Abraham, from Moses, and a number of other people. And this is a demonstration of faith that really goes beyond what uh, the human mind can uh, actually appreciate. It is, uh, it is not based on what we can understand, what we can calculate, or what we can rationalize. But instead, it goes so much more beyond that. It is truly faith on a whole new level, a whole nother level. And, and in light of that, that's where uh, chapter 12, verse 1 comes in. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. In light of everything that was talked about in uh, chapter 11, our response is to, uh, to really... Uh, accept and embrace this uh, this salvation invitation, and and then the author goes into even more description of why we really shouldn't uh, back down from this. We we cannot sell out. We cannot uh, give up on what has been presented to us. Jesus has taken away. Uh, the hostility. Verse 3, consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that we may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Uh, in your struggle against sin, you have, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do you not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord? Do not be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. Verse 7, for it is for discipline that you have, uh, that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what, for what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are Ill illegitimate children and not sons. This, this is all to say, uh, when we accept uh, this salvation invitation, we enter into this relationship with God, and the, the challenges that we encounter are really disciplines from, uh, from the Father in heaven. It's... Uh, and because of the fact that Jesus has taken away the hostility of the sinners, uh, and, and he basically bore the price of sin upon himself, what remains is, um, is this relationship with God, with the Father, who disciplines us. He, and he disciplines us out of love. Uh, just like an fa uh, earthly father would with his sons, uh, so much more would be for God and us. And we look at uh, all of this as, as a privilege. We should uh, treat it as a privilege to be disciplined in this relationship that we have, this salvation relationship that we have with God. We go on and we see uh, in uh, later on in this chapter uh, what is mentioned starting from uh, verse... I want to say uh, 21. Uh, and, and in fact, uh, starting from verse 18, 
uh, starting from verse 18 on uh, to 24, what we see is uh, this superior covenant that is made possible by Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, it was based on fear. It was based on obligation. And, and that's the type of relationship they would, they would have with, with the Father in heaven, with uh, the Lord. But in light of Jesus, Jesus brings about a brand new covenant, a covenant that is not based on fear or obligation. It is actually based on um, uh, a new mediator, uh, someone who has paid the price, who has made the final sacrifice, and uh, a bl- whose blood that was shed is far greater than that of the blood of Abel. Um, and so in light of that, starting from verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if we do, did not escape when they refused him uh, who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. This is this invitation is extended to us from the Father in heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not an invitation uh, by just uh, mere word of mouth. This is something that is coming from God. And as a result, um, our response should not be to, uh, to take this lightly. Uh, again, in light of in light of everything, in light of the the Hall of Fame of Faith of Hebrews chapter 11, in light of the fact that Jesus is the perfecter of this faith that we have in God, uh, in light of the fact that that uh, we have entered into a far superior covenant because of Jesus, we should really consider not refusing this invitation. And that is what leads to what we read here in verse 28 therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken when we talk about something that cannot be shaken when you uh, when you have an earthquake the most valuable or most uh most powerful thing that uh that we see remaining are the buildings that uh, remain standing everything else uh would have been uh, subpar. They weren't built to earthquake codes and, and, and whatnot. But the buildings that remained are the ones that are truly uh, that people have truly invested in, uh, and these are the things that are, are are most valuable. And that is what we're talking about here. Not 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 to not a literal sense of an earthquake, but when uh, when God brings about the shaking of of everything what remains is his kingdom and the kingdom that he has cannot be shaken cannot be broken down and we are receiving that and in light of all of this the hall of fame of faith the perfecter of faith the new covenant uh considering that we should not uh dismiss this warning in light of the fact that we are going to uh we're going to inherit this eternal kingdom that cannot be shaken. Thus, the latter half of uh, verse 28, thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. The worship that we bring before God in light of all of this should not stop at just a song, uh, at just a praise on a single day of a week it should be something that really is in direct response to everything that we just talked about what should that worship look like uh it how many days should it be how many minutes should it consume doesn't that make the worship that we bring before god uh, ought to it ought to be so much more than just words uh, sung in a melodic fashion. It, what is that acceptable worship? A lot of scholars will look at that acceptable worship as being outlined in the next chapter, chapter 13, verses 1 through 19. But whatever it may be, 
the important thing is, in light of everything that we've uh, learned about Jesus and what he's done, it ought to change the way we worship. It's got to go way beyond the songs and the words that we lift up on a given Sunday or just on a, on a given Wednesday. What is that worship we can bring before him on a daily basis? And so I want to ask everybody, to, let's uh, enter into a time of prayer right now. Um, let's, let's pray. Let's, uh, let's actually come before the Lord and repent. Let's repent of the substandard worship that we, we may have been bringing before the Lord. Lord, we're sorry that we, we only worshiped you one day a week, maybe two days a week. We need to bring worship that is, that is in direct response to all that we are reading, all that we're learning. But the, what the author of Hebrews is, is trying to convey to us. It's all about Jesus. He begins with our faith. And that faith is perfected through Jesus. Allowing us to enter into a far superior covenant. And if we've been bringing substandard worship in light of that, let's repent of that. But more than that, let's also commit to bringing what the author calls acceptable worship. But it should be acceptable worship in light of who we are worshiping. Let's come before the Lord in prayer, in repentance, in commitment. Let's also take a moment to pray for the people around us. Let's pray that uh, we would continue to uh, lead others into that same holy space of worship, to respond to who God is, to recognize that He is He is far superior than what this world can ever imagine. Let's pray that. This world will erupt in worship and praise of God. And that we are a part of leading others into that same same worship. So let's lift up worship. Worship from the people around us to the Lord. Let's pray.
let's also take a moment to pray for those who are struggling uh, to worship. Let's pray that uh, the God, the God of heaven, the God of all creation, will help to uh, strip down, break down walls and barriers and obstructions that block all worship. There are some people that are struggling, struggling with uh, emotional issues, financial issues. And these are things that are going to come in the way of, of that worship of God. Let's lift their names up to the Lord right now. Let's pray that worship will not be impeded or stopped because of because of just these small things, really. So let's lift lift up the burdens of other people to the Lord right now. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we give you thanks for this time and this opportunity that we can gather together to be reminded that this worship of you is really more than just words, Lord. It is in response to to the demonstration of faith by so many other people. It is also in response to Jesus, to who Jesus is to the fact that he is the perfecter of, our, perfecter of our faith, to the fact that he would die on the cross and shed blood that is far superior than that of Abel's, that because of Jesus, there is this new institution of a covenant that far exceeds the old, where the sacrifice upon the cross has satisfied our debt and that all we have to do is from our faith in Jesus accept the invitation of salvation and our response to all of that is worship Father I pray that our worship would transcend just one day, two days a week. But instead, just like what we've read in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that our entire existence is worship of you. We lift up to you all the others that are going through difficult times right now, and we pray that you will just uh, be with them, help them to continue to rise above all the different circumstances that they find themselves in. And may they be restored to worship of you once again. Father, we give you thanks for this time. We love you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of Worship Wednesday. And uh, granted that this is a, a pre-recorded live stream uh premiere uh still the the fact that we are gathered together to worship uh, you know that that's what matters most uh, that we are able to worship together as a community continue to pray for one another uh, uh within this community pray for those that are uh, in the live chat uh right now and and let's pray that worship is the is the centerpiece of our community and our lives. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I will catch you all tomorrow as we continue in this journey through the book of Genesis. Take care.